They called us lintheads. It was a derogatory term, but that's what we were. We worked in the cotton mills. And in the cotton mill, there's a lot of cotton dust and lint in the air. And that lint sticks to your clothing and you expose parts of your body. So when you get off work, you're covered up with lint. I remember sometime when I was working on what they call the graveyard shift from midnight to eight o'clock in the morning, we'd get off work and walk out into the morning sun and we'd glow. We look like something from outer space. My grandpa was the first lint head in our family. Grandpa was a farmer. He had about 80 acres in Greenwood County, South Carolina, on which he grew cotton. He grew cotton well up until the 1920s when the bow wheel came through from Texas. And the bow wheel literally destroyed all the cotton crops. Well, the cotton mill struggled too. And Grandpa struggled for about another 20 years before they finally gave up on farming and got him a job in a textile mill. Grandpa never had any driver's license, but he would walk about two miles every day to catch the mill bus. You see, the cotton mill ran a bus out into the rural areas to pick up workers. We were. Many of the farmers felt like working in the mill was like a gravy train compared to working on the farm. They had a regular number of hours to work. They got a regular paycheck and they made more money than they did on the farm. Of course, a lot of people say that when the textiles moved to the south from northeast in the beginning of the 20th century that they did it to be close to the raw material, the cotton. But that's not quite true. The real reason they came was because the labor was cheaper and there was more regulation there. So they came to the South. Were the poor Southerners exploited? Of course they were. Was it a problem for them? No, it wasn't. They only cared about earning a living for their family in a decent wage. My granddaddy was a cleanup hand. My daddy was a doffer. My mother worked in final inspection. I had two aunts worked in the spinning room. I had two uncles that worked in the mill as well. I worked in the mill. My sister was a cleanup hand on the weekends. That I was thankful for a job. It was a whole different world working in the mill from what I had been experiencing all week mainly about having money so I could go back next week. I was working part-time and I hadn't gotten another job, so I um, just tried to go through the channels and get a job, another job in Greenwood Mills, and I just went to see one of the vice presidents and they just asked for one, and he gave me a job. I ended up being what they call the quality control technician. My brother worked in final inspection. I worked in the cloth room as a doffer on second shift. Patterns, when it came in, there were a bunch of different patterns all put on one row. They graded it, and then we would doff it and put it in a rack. Well, my brother, after final inspection, became an engineer and never came back to the mill again. Now, working in the mill was not without some dangers. As I mentioned earlier, that it was hot and somewhat uncomfortable sometimes. The cotton dust was everywhere. The cotton dust was bad, and you couldn't see when you opened the doors. It, it all fogged in your face, and you can't breathe in it. It was also very, very noisy. Before the Occupational Safety and Health Act went into effect, People did even have to wear ear protection. But when I left textiles, everyone wore ear protection, as well as they had to take a breathing test once a year. There were no easy jobs in the cotton mill. I remember when I was a cloth doffer, I had to take these rolls of cloth off the loom and it was down near the floor and I'd have to pick it up and put it on my shoulder. Now that 
cloth was 13 ounces per yard. And when you had about 100 yards, it was a considerable weight that I have to carry to about 200 feet and put on a cart. I'd be tired when I got off work. I know sometimes I'd go in weighing 200 pounds. When I came out, I'd only weigh 198. I'd sweat off two pounds while I was at work. There weren't any easy jobs there. And the windows, as most folks will tell you, were bricked up in textile mills to keep the employees from looking out. But that wasn't true. They were bricked up because the temperature and humidity inside had to be controlled for the process. I was born on Matthews Mill Village in Greenwood, South Carolina. We lived in a duplex there. You see, the kind of housing you got on the Mill Village, which was owned by the Mill Company, needless to say, depended on what kind of job you had in the mill. My daddy had a rather low-paying job, so we lived in a duplex. Now, the Mill Village had everything. It had a company store. It had a movie theater, a post office, churches, a school, a bank. Everything you needed was right there. And that mill village would have been one of the first ones ever built with brick houses. Labor unions tried unsuccessfully to organize textile mills. Now, there was a movie that came out in 1986 starring Sally Field called Norma Ray. Now, this was about organizing a labor union in a textile mill. But if you had worked in textiles like I had, you'd know there were a couple of things which did not ring true. Number one was Southerners were not very accommodating to Northerners who came south, particularly if they were labor organizers. Number two, Pat Hingle, the actor who played Norma Ray's father, was a doffer of spinning frames in the movie. Real life wouldn't happen. He was too old and too slow. And number three, Norma Ray herself, who was a union organizer, her occupation in the mill was she was a weaver. A weaver is one of the highest paid people in the production area of the mill. Unlikely, she would have bit the hand that fed her. Now, when that movie came out in 1986, I was working in textile management then, a different company from which I'd worked as a young man. And our company at one time had owned a factory that was attempted to be unionized. Well, the employees voted the union in and they called for a strike. The company immediately locked the gates, sold off all the assets, including the equipment, and left the scene. In the court case, the court found that the company had the right to close its business if it wanted to. Now, something good did come out of that, you see, because the company I was working for offered higher wages and benefits than any union could ever offer. I guess they thought that if they offered better wages and benefits than a union could guarantee, no, the employees would have no reason to join a union. I know we were called lintheads, and it was hard and difficult work working in the cotton mills. But the cotton mills provided us with a standard of living that otherwise we would not have had.